you know, you're you're crushing it by 30. I can only imagine the things that you're going to do over the next decade. So before you become like a super big deal, let's let's memorialize some of the losses because uh, every every entrepreneur has some epic failures in their rearview mirror, and if they don't, they're lying to you. So um, you know, so, somewhere between end of government contract job and where you're at today, I know there's got to be some fun stories in there about failures, things you wish you would have done better partnerships that you accidentally imploded um like like give us give us paul's you know greatest hits list of failures before you became a big deal um and i still wouldn't call myself a big deal and i think most successful people wouldn't there's always someone that you like your friend my friend groups are like i'm a i'm a a peacock i'm a chicken i'm tiny yeah that's great um that's why i wanted to get into go abundance because i'm like i want to be the brokest guy in a group of people that can help me like leverage yeah. money and make more money and do, do have more success and then give more back to charity. It's like, you, you got to constantly be pushing yourself. Cause I, I feel like a peon every time I go to one of those meetings, I'm like, dude, I need to step up my game. So yes, I yeah, agree. Exactly. I agree. I agree my, with you. Failure. Um, one of my best failures was actually while I was still at the government contracting company trying to become an entrepreneur. So this is like one of my first freelance things, me and my friends, uh, my one of my friend in particular, Andrew, um, We knew some cybersecurity stuff. And so we started a door knocking cybersecurity company where we would go knock on doors and say, hey, sir, I just wanted to show you real quick that we can hack into your Wi-Fi right now and turn on all your cameras in your home. Would you like us to fix that for you for $100? We had a lot of doors shut in our faces. We made a couple hundred bucks, but (laughs) people kind of thought we were like these cute 16 year old kids, but I did that. I ran around with a computer and would literally hack into people's Wi-Fi, knock on their door and then say, Hey, listen, I'm hacking your Wi-Fi right now. Do you like me to fix it? It took me two seconds to literally change one thing on the router, hundred bucks a pop, but um, also probably illegal. Uh, (laughs) Yes. When you have have to break 10 federal laws before making the sale, probably not worth the hundred bucks. Not that not worth a hundred bucks and the doors shut in our faces and um, it was just a good experience overall. So that company failed. Um, started a, a, probably one of the, that one was good because there was a problem that we were actually solving. It's just that we were doing it in kind of an abrupt and uh, like attacky way that right. made people immediately on the defensive. If I knew sales the way I do now, I'd probably crush it in that industry, to be honest, but um, I don't have zero desire to do that. The other side of things was, uh, this one was really good because it taught me that demand, there needs to be demand. So we tried to create software for the bail bonds industry that helped them basically organize all of their uh, backend operations in their company. And I spent, uh, we talked to one bail bonds person who said, my files are everywhere. I'm all disorganized and yeah, I don't know what to do. And I being young and not knowing anything at the time, one person's opinion is not everyone's opinion. And also you have to judge the caliber of the individual you're listening to. It's I, I don't hate being judgy, but in business, you, you do have to make judgments about the success of your long-term company. And I made a, a huge judgment. One person, not a successful bail bonds person, extremely disorganized. This person just needed to freaking have an assistant and learn business. But I took them as like this, the, the every bails bonds person in the world is just like this guy. Then we go back and we spend six months building software to organize this person's files based off that one. Con- it was a two hour conversation. We recorded it, listened to it a bunch of times, figured out like the organization structure. And then we went back to the bail bonds industry and no one wanted it. That was the best thing I ever learned because I learned that you have to have demand. There has to be a yeah. problem or a big desire that you're, you're solving, uh, solving something for you're helping someone go from point A to point B. And I just wasted six months, a bunch of time, a couple thousand bucks, like setting it up, things up on legal zoom and then driving for meetings, Starbucks meetings, coding away, buying a new mouse for my laptop. And I bought the business cards and bought, built the website for myself. And I did everything that you don't need to do. And there was no one who wanted it because it wasn't actually valuable. Yeah, Best lesson is... of my life right there in business. 